Welcome adventurers, what's going on guys? My name is Cody, this is Taking 20, a channel about all things role-playing games, and today we're taking a look at the new Bestiary 6 by Paizo for their Pathfinder game, and at the end of the video, I'm even going to show you a way that you can win your very own copy. I hope you guys are ready, let's get started. All right, guys, so before we jump into taking a look at what's inside this book, I do want to say thank you to Paizo for sending me a couple of copies of this book. It's not even out yet, and uh, I've had a lot of fun looking over it. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for sending me some books, Paizo. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, let's take a look at the numbers. The first thing that we notice is that this book is 317 pages, so it's definitely a really big big book. In addition to that, we have 281 of those pages that are actually dedicated to the monsters in the book. Those are the pages where you're going to have new monsters, new lore for those monsters, and that's where all the stat blocks are going to come in. So almost 89% of the book is dedicated to monsters. In total, you're going to find 233 new monsters with an additional 17 variants on those monsters, meaning that those last 17 monsters don't necessarily have their own stat block, but they have a nice easy way for you to kind of mix them up for your game. The first group we have is CR 1 half to CR 6. As you guys know, a lot of games and a lot of gameplay happens kind of in this low level range, so it's probably a good idea to see how many new monsters we're getting to throw at our players in this kind of low range. And so by my count, we have 60 monsters in this CR 1 half to CR 60, or roughly about 25.7%, right at about a quarter of the book is going to be for these low monsters. This is also nice because only about a quarter of this book is at this low level, meaning that all the rest of the monsters are going to be a lot higher than this. The next group we have is CR7 to CR12. This is a good snapshot of our kind of mid-range games. And with this, you're going to get 67 new monsters, or about 28.7%. So a lot of monsters there as well. The third group we have is CR13 all the way to CR20. This, of course, is your late game. In this group, you're going to get another 68 monsters, or right at about 29%, so practically the same thing we had for the previous group. And finally, guys, we have our last group, which is CR21 all the way to CR30. For those of you guys out there running epic level games, and you're going to get a lot of monsters in this group. You're going to get 38 more monsters for epic levels, uh, so you're going to get about another 16 17% of the actual monsters you get are going to be for epic level games. And none of these numbers take into account the actual remaining variants. We're not adding any of those in here. So you are going to get some more variants mixed throughout these groups. Uh, this is just the actual monsters that have stat blocks in this book. All right, guys, here are a few screenshots from the book. Obviously, you know, I can't just flip through the whole thing, nor would you really want to watch that video. Uh, but overall, my first impressions of this thing is that one, the book is really big. Uh, it's not quite Tome of Beasts, but it's bigger than Volo's Guide. If I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, I think Volo's Guide only had like 190, 200 monsters. And so with the variants, we're at 250 in this book without the variants, 233. So you're going to get a lot of monsters. You're going to get a lot of bang for your buck. In addition to that, I was really impressed with the creativity that went into some of these monsters. Nothing in this book really feels recycled to me, and it can be really challenging to continue to come up with new and creative monsters. And I really think that Paizo succeeded here in bringing me something that I will use in my games and that can kind of spark that creativity. I'll also say that the book is, I think, a little heavy on daemons and outsiders and fae. Uh, and that's probably because, you know, with the typical Pathfinder or even fantasy setting, if you're coming up with crazy out there monsters that are really over the top and terrifying, they probably don't commonly exist where the rest of your fantasy world is. Those are creatures that will 
probably be encountered on or brought to your plane, but not native to it. All right, let's talk about some of my favorites on my initial read through of the book. The first one I want to talk about is the Phasma Demon. The Phasma Demon is a CR-17 creature that has a couple of really unique abilities here. It casts some illusions, some, it has some spell-like abilities, and then it has a wonderful little ability called Consume Fear that basically as a standard action, if it begins its turn grappling uh, a player, an opponent, it can attempt to feed on that creature's morality and innate fear leaving it with some charisma ability drain. Definitely a fun little monster that I'm going to try to squeeze into my game. The next monster I want to highlight is the Uliadru, which is a demon that basically plants eggs inside of a person while they are asleep and then can use those eggs to continue to read their mind and locate them at a later date. This is a fun little trick that I think game masters and dungeon masters are going to be able to use uh, against their party to pretty significant effect. Another monster that I am looking forward to sliding into my games. Another awesome monster in this book is the Siabre. The Siabre is basically an undead druid. It is to druids what a death knight would be to paladins. For druids that fought against all odds to protect their land from the curse of the abyss or undead, some of them can choose to become a Siabre through a pretty terrible ritual, leaving them, in essence, kind of like this blighted soul druid that hates everything. This is a wicked little undead monster and a very powerful one at that, one that, again, I can't wait to use. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't include the four horsemen in this book. Uh, coming in at CRs of 27, CR 28, CR 29, and 30, the four horsemen are very powerful. Each of them get about two pages or so in the book to cover their stat block, a little bit of a background, and even talk about who some of their cults and followers might be. After reading through them, I gotta tell you, you could easily make a campaign built around them, and although the Four Horsemen are a big trope that you might be able to do without the help of the Beast Series 6, uh, Paizo definitely has some really great information in here to kind of put their own unique spin on it that, I don't know, I really, really appreciated. Overall, I gotta say that this book is, it's really, really good. If you are playing Pathfinder and you go out and you pick up the Beast Series 6, you're not gonna have any regrets. All of the monsters in this book are really usable for your game and I gotta tell you one of my favorite things about the book is they are all unique and new and fresh. So if you are feeling kind of like your monsters or your encounters are getting a little stale and you'd like to challenge your players with some new creatures, this is definitely a book that you're gonna want to take a look at. And even if you are not playing Pathfinder I gotta tell you, just because of the monster design and some of the, the quips about the, the monsters, they're completely usable in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition or Edge of the Empire for, for Star Wars. You could, you could use a lot of these monsters regardless of the system they that you are running. Now, I will say that if you are going to use these monsters for 5th Edition like I am, you'll probably want to pick, pick this book up a little bit off of MSRP. You know, try to get it for 30, 40 bucks or so instead of the, the 45, 50 that it's it's marked at uh, because a lot of the book is stat blocks and you're going to have to spend some time converting. But if you're just using it for the backstories, the monsters themselves, the artwork, and you're, that's what you're using for your games, then, uh, you know, try to snag this a couple bucks under MSRP. Uh, that's probably your best bet. And if you guys want to order your very own copy of Pathfinder's Bestiary 6. I'm going to put a link in the description below that'll take you straight to Amazon. It's an affiliate link, so you'll be supporting the channel if, if you use it. Just want to put that disclaimer out there. Also in the description is going to be a chance, it's going to be a link for a competition for you guys to have a chance to win your very own copy. Literally, you'll, you'll win this copy. Like, I'll send it to you. So uh, be sure to go check out that competition below. Good luck, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Again, special thanks to Paizo for sending me a couple of copies to give away. You guys kick ass. I really appreciate it. 
If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. I'll be putting out new videos every week on DM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time.